the second I'm missing which one the other was the cable so after centering on that point I'll rotate it in plane So rotate works in a plain view or in associative views but still uh, they are in plane. So I'm able to rotate like this only in plain view, not in elevation. If I want to rotate something in elevation I have to create an associative view or section and I can rotate there as I need. So what I did now was to drag the symbol on uh, the bridge in plane. We won't be able to see it yet here, as we don't know its position. Here, see, although in plane it looked as if it's overlapping the cable, the problem is the height. The height is not correct. So, in order to correct, I'm going to look now from front. I can see here the element, and I'm going to move it in this view. So, move it vertically. I'm holding shift now to make sure I am uh, the first one to make sure I am uh, orthogonal uh, I'm uh, ortho is activate and now I'm not able to rotate in this view uh, I'm not able to do this because uh, this is a front view and the rotation either works in plane or in 3d so when you hit rotate you have here plan, plan or freely in 3D. To be able to rotate it freely in 3D you would need to define an axis. So if you still want to rotate this, you can do like uh, have this approach. I say uh, rotate uh, 3D rotation but in order to be able to do a 3D rotation I have to define a rotation line. So this is the element. So I'm giving them a line around which we will do the rotation. This is the line defined by two axes. One was the center point, the other was an extension. And <coughs> now I'm going to pick up a point and then move it upwards. So I'm trying to do this without uh, having to do an associative view. So if this doesn't work, I'm going to do an associative view. Okay, and now I should see where is the first cable. So it was this one. Okay, so again, I selected an axis around which I wanted to do the rotation, and then I rotated in plane. The alternative was as we did yesterday to do a view, an associative view. Now that I obtained the correct rotation I can go back to a front view. I can align the crosshairs parallel to this line so I go here to angle, define, click on this line, okay it didn't define why.
Mm, strange. But we can do this. We don't need to change the cursor. I see it only uh, is affected by plane points. But we can do something like this. Modify points. And I'm going to pick this point. And then I'll pick the ending of this first line. The only problem is I don't know which one it is, so because okay, you click on it on the ending. Okay, correct. So now uh, it's an easy job to change the others. So it was the other or what? No, 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 not like this. Uh, in a front view. Because if you pick like this, you don't have precision. And select the intersection between the cylinder and the line. It's no problem if you change the view. It's no problem. No, you have to do in the same uh, view. Well, it's the other one. You see in the preview on the left. It looked okay on this second line. No, you're not allowed to rotate. So it's the second line. As uh, on the left window, you can see the projection correctly. I think you did the rotation. So look from the front. Yes. You know, we can give a color to the cable and it would be easy. You can change the color of this cable and this way you won't confuse with any other cable. It's not the same because there also going to be there's uh, going to be a rotation in plane. So now you just move to the plane view. But I or I'll show you an easier solution. We'll finish this example, but then I just thought of a very simple solution with these cables. But uh, let's finish this example. So uh, go to plan view on the right the window. Yes, so from the wheel, select uh, the middle, from that circle, no, 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 from circle, yes. And now you also have to rotate this cable in plane and you're, you're finished with it. 
so no go to the star okay you can hit rotate but you need to define the center of rotation which is the beginning of your cable rotate okay select the object click on the object now click on no 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 click on the start of the cable so on the left side the far left side so the point around will rotate which is the start point of the green uh, line uh, the start point of the green line should be no 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 the start point that one perfect go back to the right ending Uh, yes, midpoint exactly. Perfect. And now you just have to click on the green cable, green line. The ending of it. Did you manage? <laughs> So you managed. Okay, I just thought of an easier solution. So this is complicated because we we have to do several rotation, one in plane and the other in elevation, because your cable is not uh, just horizontal; it varies on two directions. However, we can easily do this with another function. I'll show you. Yes. Exactly the same thing you just did before, only select with stretch entities the other side. So the thick side you should select and do a filter on 3D object. So hit uh, stretch entities, the second pencil on the right side. Second pencil select stretch entities function which is the second uh, the second pencil no the second pencil the second stretch entities that one now go to filters by element which is the second filter that one and select 3d object okay now select the zoom out a bit and select this thick ending of the cable no, 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 the entire, not, oh, no, 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 just the ending, the thick ending of it. So all that is very, very varying. Okay, perfect. And now you, you should select the part which you know where to place. So I recommend uh, the, inter the part where the section changes, so the contact point between uh, the small diameter and the big diameter. So uh, go on the, follow the green uh, line. Follow the green line until you meet the intersection between the big part and the small part. So go to the right side. Okay, no, 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 not to the ending, just the intersection where the, th the section thickens. So on the left, go left now, down left. So exactly the part that changes, so it's not constant. Because that would be a good point to stretch from. Okay. So exactly that area and that area in contact with the green line so the intersection between the thick uh, okay that one that point so left click uh, no you shouldn't have used that uh, option 
uh, leave me to show you. It's uh, quite easy, but uh, uh, you didn't pick the correct point. Or you did. Okay. Sorry, it's a delay. <laughs> Uh, there's a delay in what you're doing and what I see. Okay, that's one problem we can solve. But no, I do like no. I pick by the middle, but I need to click Click the beginning of the grid. No, but we need to either extend the green line or I I was thinking of clicking now on the where the green line starts. Yes, unfortunately they have a louder colleague than me, so it's noisy. We are talking to Canada and we don't need to shout, he's talking in the same city but he shouts, I think he can be heard better. Okay, I'll try to fit with this, however I'll show you an easier method and more precise, so we'll work directly in 3D and we'll just do an extrusion at the ending, but I'll also like to finish this, what we're doing. Uh, midpoint. I, it doesn't matter, of course uh, this doesn't have to exceed the bridge, but uh, we'll make it longer and then extend it uh, according to its own axis. Okay, now of course it's not as we want it, we want this side to be in contact somehow with the deck. Yes, I know, but now it's easy because we can select this ending and move it until it touches the concrete. And after we finish this, I'll show you an easy method to do this entire process. So now we have to do the same stretch entities option, but until it uh, connects. Can you hear me? Hello? No? Okay. So we understood my point, but uh, now that we did it, uh, I'll show you how we can actually do it more efficiently. This is not a good, it's too time consuming to do like this. So we'll try a different approach. We will create a simple cable and then we'll use the extrusion function to create the ending. This will uh, fasten the process uh, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to use different colors to be easy to identify. So we'll go with the second approach we did, I've shown you yesterday. 
Yes, it's too much. Uh, it's too time consuming and it's not worth it as we can obtain the same result. The changing of the ending. So, still timber element. Okay. That's okay. Uh, I'll select this ending. And now. So we work with this method, we just work in isometric view. I think the section was too small. Do you remember? And okay, connect with the second uh, cable, but uh, we should think what was the section we used in the other. Zero one. Or... We did some measurements yesterday. So okay, hit escape. Yes, it's uh, easy. Yes, but uh, we'll use the same section. So double click on the purple element and try it with 0 0.1. 0 0.1 slash 0 0.1. I think 0 0.2 we use. Okay. So the only problem in this method is what should what can we do with the ending because you see this one is parametric. So if we were to change things here we couldn't change anything. While here we can change material, we can change diameter. The only problem is with its ending. So in order to obtain the same similar result we can convert this into a 3D element. So look what we can do here. After we establish the shape, we can go to additional modules, to bonus tools. Convert elements from uh, architecture to 3D solids. Okay, now we obtain the same result, a 3D object. But with this 3D object, we can do some extrusions. So, what I'm going to do now is change the way I look at it. You should, uh, I will rotate as I want to see that surface at the end. Because I can uh, do Boolean operations such as uh, adding points or extrusion only on uh, 3D surfaces or 3D objects. I'm not able to do extrusion on architectural element. So uh, if I convert from architectural element to 3D, I lose the, parami the parameters, so I cannot change the diameter anymore. Uh, okay, just a second. Why doesn't it make sense? Okay, can you rotate so we can see the ending of the cable as we need to do some extrusion there. So rotate in order to see where the cable ends. Okay, so underneath the bridge it's okay. It's perfect. And now. Uh, almost. 
rotate so we can watch the ending of the cable so it look at the other ending we should look perpendicular to it almost okay let's zoom in on this ending yes it's okay right now so we can use extrusion not only to extend so uh, we have this surface one easy way would be to go here and say extrude this is the okay deactivate the rotation first this is the ending surface so extrusion can work on oh my god it didn't i can't believe it did that which it's not a full cylinder it should have been Well, it doesn't matter, but I expected it to be as far as I see here. This is not a cylinder, it's rather a pipe. So I expected here to have a 3D surface at the end. And I see that it didn't create that uh, 3D surface. I can add this cap, let's say with this uh, surface based on three points no but uh, it's not okay so this should have been a surface It's not okay because the, uh, let's isolate this element. A bit. We have this function element selection, so we see only the element this way. And if I go to animation, I think I won't see it filled. No, we have a cap here, so we needed this uh, ending to do extrusion. Let's try it now. I'll go back to wireframe and say extrude. Yes, but... Uh, The only problem now is the fact that I cannot remove this rotation button is stuck somehow. I don't know why. Can you deactivate this rotation? You see that rotation button? I don't know why it's stuck. Oh, because of this function. Okay. Maybe. Okay, the extrude works, but we need to. Okay, perfect. So that is one way of extension, but we're going to do something even uh, smarter than this. So that was the surface I needed, but we'll try to, oh, based on that surface, we'll go to extrude circle, select that surface you did before. Okay, this one. And now I can change the radius. So I can select center point. The midpoint is known, if not, you just select based on midpoint. So left click here, midpoint, and any point should do. You see, and now I can input the radius. So it's safe, 0.5 is too big, point, oh, it's the radius. So 0.3, no, 0.25. You see, point 0.2 is also big. I think point 0.2 was. So after I do this extrusion, okay, uh, it should be a full circle. So I hit uh, escape. And now I, I can do 
further the extrusion. So it was 1.5 meters or something. So I 1.5 Okay Yes, so I extruded this element and now in order to create that ending because you know we had an ending there We can also extrude the rectangle so on this uh, already aligned we can go again with extrusion and select this extrude rectangle and still pick that surface. So this is the surface. We will select this option based on center point. And again with midpoint we identify the middle. Okay. And now we can input the dimensions for this so this anchor plate uh, if it is whole how big it was 0.2 so 0.5 let's say enter and the other is still 0.5 and now the thickness i can give the thickness let's say 0.1 okay and again i'm going to continue the that big section with still with extrude function with circle and select that surf this surface i'm going to identify the middle of this one the radius should be the one we used before 0.2 and let's say we go extra okay the angle it's we i hit escape for this and the angle the length should be 0.3 or 0.5 let's say so you see basically we obtained something similar but the most important thing is uh, we could easily align so we aligned even faster than we did with the other element so my uh, my recommendation would be first to do all cables with uh, that function from architecture with uh, steel elements and then for the ending we just do some extrusions so we have the the end plate because you see we can also control easily by the length we, we expand where should go the anchor no, uh, you try one maybe. Oh yes, uh, I I made the shortcut for you. It's A. If you want to change points, uh, do. No, don't move. No, 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 no. Don't move. Stretch. Yes, but stretch entity is not move because if you move it will move from the other ending as well So hit escape. It's not okay select uh, the second function stretch entities The second pencil No, no on the right side you have the functions no, 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 no. On the really right, right side, you have the function called stretch entities. We've used before. It's the second pencil. Yes, yes, yes. You need to stretch entities, not move them. And now you can select the points you'd like to alter and do the modifications. You can work in the right window. It's no problem with this. I was only against you using move. Yes, underneath the deck. Exactly. That's why you are using stretch entities and not move. Because if you are going to move, the cable would move also from the other ending. And it will be uh, exceeding the tower. You understand? Now you should... No. 
okay, I can do it, but you already know what to do because you did it before on the other ending. I was only against you using uh, move function. Uh, uh, apart from that, you're doing correctly and I understand what you're doing. So we just here uh, select this filter, 3D object, select this ending. No, okay. We should uh, select by color. It's safer. Okay. And now you'd like to move it under the deck as it normally would be positioned. So you would go here. But not like this, just a second. I'll hit again this modify, use the color filter, because I need to select a known point, not any point, as I did before. Uh, so the known point is a point placed on this uh, bigger tube than the cable. And I know this, that this point Okay, you do that. Okay. This is what you wanted, right? Okay. Okay, so now that would be the, be the best workflow to draw all cables and then just fit the endings. Because you see, if we do like this, we don't need to do rotation. We only need to adapt the ending. We don't need to rotate in any way. We just draw in isometric view. We just click on to endings and we have the cable. Then we just use extrusion on the endings and we can lengthen the cables or thicken the area. We can do, draw the anchoring plate. Uh, it would be easy if you had the same angle. I'm not sure you're having the same angles. I think the angles are different and they vary on two ways. That's the problem. If they were varying only on one side, we would only rotate and compensate the rotation. But you need to compensate both in plan and in isometric view. So for the next cable, you would do... Okay, we can choose for the beginning. We can use as many colors as we like and then change them how we want in the latest uh, but the, your next step would be to draw again so we go back to architecture and here we select this uh, where is it steel timber element and I'm going to select the next cable so we're from this support line of course we, we should uh, also select this parameter so they're the same if I select this now the next cable will have exactly this setting so I'm not I don't need to change them anymore because they only the software always remembers the last setting if we just edit the setting we'll have to do it again so you try to click on that point And you already have the third cable. And now what is left to be... Yes, but uh, I don't have any other option now. Because uh, I think it takes less time to recreate the ending than it takes to do the rotations. We worked a lot in the first example. Indeed, we didn't ha have to do the extrusion, but now let's see how much time it takes to make the anchoring plate. So if we go here. Oh. 
okay first i'm going to go to, to convert this so using bonus tools i'm going to convert from architecture to 3d so architecture to 3d solids this is the element oh yeah oh, sorry we no convert elements we clicked on the bridge on the deck and not on the cable uh, what happened yeah no hit forward I couldn't cancel the cables look it's here uh, yes I hit an undo but uh, that doesn't matter uh, what's this this is still cable okay so convert this one to okay so but why didn't it convert it's still uh, still timber maybe I didn't say correct so from no 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 <laughs> it's from architecture to 3d solid that's why it did nothing now it did or no so this is a user is an architecture element and I want to convert it into a 3d so can you click on this Okay, now it's a 3D object. Okay, it's about the lag of TeamViewer. Uh, and now, now that I have a 3D object instead of an architectural element, I can do the extrusions. So now I go with the circle. So just select this area. And now uh, I can choose here an enclosed circle. No. Okay, center. That doesn't matter. I'm going to center the point. Okay, and now uh, I'm inputting the area point two, and now is uh, okay. Now it asks us for the angle. I'm just hitting one escape, and the length of it four point sixty five. We can do things like this if you are not, uh, don't like the way it looks. We can use extrusion to um, make this closer. So we can do like this while having extrusion selected. I can select this area and extrude it this way. This way. So it will remove the access points. So like this. So you don't need to do that operation with stretch points. We can work on this cable from this view. So I can say this bigger area should cover this part. Should be up until here. Or you pick the area. So now we are cutting. We are extruding the other way around. So it removes part of the element. So you select as far as you'd like this to go. Why? You you managed to do it with the other. Okay, select that area. Okay. Now, uh, the only difference is the fact that uh, this uh, looks shorter now. And we need still 465. So, in order to obtain 465, we'll just determine the difference. So, I can go with this ruler. And see how long is this uh, element actually so I'll select this outer line from here can you zoom in on the 
furthest corner okay and click yes and I will copy this value so it's almost two meters but you need it 465 so I copy that value and now I hit extrude again and I would need to select this uh, area but if not it's no big deal we can use stretch entities again and that's all uh, that doesn't work it's not the right angle for it but we can go like this stretch entities select this area yes so I want a difference so I'll go like this from yes but uh, if I want this to be 4.65 but I, I need it uh, I need a direction it's not okay like this so I would do like this uh, No, you can't. There's no advantage in the first. They, as long if they have become three D objects, you can only get uh, quantities, uh, volumes. But you, this is not parametric. So, uh, other disadvantages there isn't. So it was a good method. If you didn't need to use this ending and didn't need to export in 3D object, if it maintained that still element, you could change diameters. But uh, if uh, I may, I have to change this into 3D object, then there is no real advantage. Yes. No, you can do. You can copy this, but you have to do then two rotations: one in plane and one in uh, elevation. That's all. Of course, you can copy the cables. Okay, so I think this uh, would help you. Yeah, you can also copy and move them, it's no problem from my point of view. Just the fact that you need to do two rotations. Okay. Uh, well, this is uh, just uh, this is actually made uh, with the digital terrain model. Uh, there are some points, and the program can generate a surface. So this was actually created using some random points. I'll show you. Uh, so normally this is uh, uh, done not by 3D modeling, but once you have the points from the terrain, the program can generate this landing, because this is ground actually, it's not something made by man. And this is obtained by triangulation. We can do the other way around, so I'll show you how it was done. Uh, there was this point, terrain point, we can place them manually here now. Actually, I'm going to do them in a different drawing. What you try to add, or what? Uh, 
Oh, drawing files. I don't know. Yeah, show me how you are doing it. How you tried to add. No, no, you have to click on the parent folder. Yes. Assign drawing files. <coughs> Upwards. No, no, it's okay. It's just upward. Assign drawing files. No, no, Rita. It's in the middle. Assign drawing files. Just above. Okay. And of course, you can start with 30 because 30 is placed in proposal 1. You can go uh, where it ends. So start with 100. Because 31 won't let you. No, 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 no. No, if you'd like drawing 31, you had just have to move it here because it's already in a folder. So we can add add drawings there, but uh, drawings that are not assigned yet to any folder. So starting drawing 50, you can add. So if I he here assign drawing. I can start with 51 minus oh, 60, let's say. So I added the following drawings. I cannot add 31 as 31 is placed here. I can only move it. Yes, that way it didn't work. Okay, so regarding this, this can be done with uh, 3D terrain. Uh, so uh, I'll play some points. So I place no. So each time I see an edge of this, I can place a point. Normally these points are just read from the real terrain by GPS or total station system by the surveying engineer. So these points are read from terrain and given us as input data. Then the program will do a triangulation of these points. So it's not 3D modeling of the ground as the ground is irregular. It's really complicated and it's not worth the time. It's rather going on the real terrain and measure some uh, real points. So now I'm placing some. I'm doing the other way around, so I have a 3D model and I place some points. Okay, I'll just leave them like this. So uh, these points, maybe you don't see them. They aren't, let's say, if we look isometric, they don't look like something spectacular. Uh, let's go here. So I'm going to isolate them like this. I'm going to show you just the drawing. So this is, these are some points I created here. These are 3D points. And now with the terrain, I can do this uh, second module and I'll say mesh optimize grid. So this mesh function will generate a terrain from this uh, point. So basically to do a triangulation and based on the triangulation of this grid, it will uh, obtain this 3D shape. So normally you get these points from terrain by surveying. So you see these are the points. If I added more points on the other side, I would have had a better shape. So that shape you've seen was not done by 3D modeling but rather with the uh, digital terrain model. This uh, I can 
convert into a 3D element. So this is not a 3D shape. It's just a triangular grid, which I can convert into 3D. So I can say convert digital train model and place it somewhere on a drawing. You will do it just as I did, because you don't have the train. You just uh, pick up the points in the model. I just invented some points. Normally, if it was a real situation, you'd have that point from GPS. So you just place the GPS and you get the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the points on the terrain. And then you triangulate the surface and you get this uh, result. So for you to complete the project, you either copy that surface or place some points on it and do this mesh optimize. So I don't have another solution because this is irregular. It's the terrain which is given by mother nature. It's not, uh, uh, we don't model like, so this was just an, an example, but it can be used. So just pick as many points as you like on the shape I gave you. And then with the triangulation, you get this shape. There can also be some, let's say I'll show you another way to model some advanced shapes in all plan. So I'll go to this drawing. So we can also, but it was not the case because the train is irregular, it's not a clear shape. So if we have this situation, because normally they do some um, arrangement of the start of the bridge, they don't leave that as, uh, let's say, as it is. No, where is the angle? Zero. So I can also do like this. So it's a semicircle. I can copy this. Change the radius. I'll just delete the line and draw it again. So the first will be from 2D to 3D. Okay, now I'm going to align these two shapes. Okay, and also move one on top of the other. Okay, and now I'll select this connecting line. And the program can generate a solid on this shape. So it can go like this with, um, let's say how it's in English, uh, tessellated uh, solid. And we'll uh, handle this, uh, select the last option and select this assembly. Uh, okay, now we'll do with uh, the second, so tessellated indeed, but first option. 
so select all contours or right click enable to in order to be able to select two contours so this is the first contour the second and the connecting line yes oh, okay i need at least two 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 lines that was all i think it also works the second option which is automatic so tessellated i needed to give him two two ways of crossing the two cross section tessellated solids let's try with the last option and it did this shape so you see it goes from one shape to another so this can be an option and then i can uh, so if you'd like to model 3D and not with random points to give as if the train is real, you can do like this. And this is something, let's say, artificial. But uh, this is also done for bridges. So now I can extend like this. And this can be the start point of your bridge. So you place this under your bridge. Yeah. Okay, so you can do like this, so it's regulated shape, not the real terrain, but it's okay, because the terrain can be systemized, so it's plausible also. Just pick up in plane some radius, so I just drew two circles, you choose the circles that you need as diameter, so the star point and the offsetted version. Yes, and deactivate drawing 7 as well. <laughs> because drawing 7, uh, it's a digital train model that you cannot move, so deactivate it. Drawing 7. 7, yeah, deleted. No, deactivate it. And the one uh, one advice Okay Okay Yes There will be just a texture we are going to apply, it's no big deal. Uh, what would be interesting is if you pl also place the foundations. Nothing spectacular, just some rafters and uh, some piles. As we started to do before. So under these piles you should also place a rafter and some vertical piles. Yes, of course.
I'm here. Yes, yes, we'll do it at the end. Uh, I'd also like you to do the foundation because you know how to do them. The foundation. <laughs> The phone. Okay, so after we also finish the foundation and the 3D, we'll, uh, tomorrow we'll uh, uh, draw the do the textures. So, okay, not tomorrow, Thursday. Okay, on Friday I won't. Yeah, the only problem is uh, I won't be on Friday afternoon. I'm leaving. Uh, and also I won't be in the weekend so I can show you now how you can texture elements uh, I won't be available Friday at this at noon I can be let's say in the evening for you so it wouldn't be nice if or if you can on Friday as we met before at two or three let me think yes starting two o'clock in the evening it's no problem so but uh, let me think so to because it's a seven hours so I don't want to miss the day <laughs> so uh, let's let me think. oh actually <laughs> my Friday is actually your Thursday so can we meet on Thursday in the night at 2 a.m. your time? If it's okay with you, otherwise uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, because uh, it's no, it's not actually no big deal. I can also show you today it's about applying textures the only problem there might be some uh, things to do here as uh, we need to move the textures for instance for concrete and for cable there's no problem you just uh, do like this I'm still recording so you will be able to use the only problem will be on the lanes because on the lane we will need to pick up a texture for the lane and it might map the entire uh, surface so it might also map the deck so one option would be to place another 3d object that walks around your your bridge and that uh, can have a texture of uh... okay just uh, let's first uh, can you activate the cables? So, oh, we are on the cables drawing, right? Okay, we are. Sorry, we are. Or no, no, they are on gray. So, try to activate the drawing where they are placed. Uh, you we draw this cable, the 3D cables, in a drawing. I don't know in which drawing. I can't find out, but maybe you know. So not the 3D lines, but uh, the 3D shape of the cable. To show. It's no matter, I just want to show you how you apply materials, so... Because uh, I, uh, the only thing we need to discuss in more detail is how you do, are how you're going to apply <laughs> on the road. Because on the road, you there'll be... Okay, also zoom on the animation window. Double click on the mouse wheel. On the left window. Uh, double click on the mouse wheel okay so uh, applying textures in all plan is pretty easy we can even uh, I'll show you how we can do here so this is only one object so in order to apply textures I can go here and say into bonus tools change 
assign custom surfaces to 3D architectural elements. And here we'll go to Office. And we can use this 30 years edition materials or the standard materials. Let's say metal. Smooth plate. And we can choose here something. Let's say R. In order to apply, I just drag and drop it here. So now it will look uh, like steel. So if I go to real time render, not sketch, real time render. That's really easy. Rendering is the easiest part. This is just a preview of rendering. Just a second. We'll, uh, we'll get to that as well. Uh, so, this is one way of applying. Okay, let's try something different. Copper, for instance. So, I drag and drop this texture here. Now, the thing is, maybe you'd like to do different colorings. In, the, in case you want this, you have to divide the object into several objects. So I would need to do this slice function. Uh, and select a 3D object. And now I can select a surface. So what I'm going to do is actually a division. Or uh, if I don't find the surface, I can select these three points. So by clicking on three points, I'm doing a division of the 3D object. So now you see I have two 3D objects. And I'm doing the same thing here. I'll be doing. So I go with slice is still activated. I select this ending. And based on three points, I'm actually dividing. So this is one part, this is the second, and the same thing I'm going to do here. Okay, and now I can apply, as we have different objects, I can apply different colorings. So I can go to this assign, office, so I can move this on So you see, they they get different textures as well, so if we'd like to render what we're doing here. So uh, you see, this is a bit of disadvantage as now we have several objects, but we can group them anytime we like. So if I want to group this, I can go to basic and here element group. And I can group this into a single element, call it cable or whatever. And now it's a single entity. Because uh, if you'd like to do the first approach where you just rotate and copy this cable, you need to make it a group in order to not to select uh, each part of it separately. You understand? Okay, so this is now a group and if you'd like a rendering of something, you just right click here and go to, of course you can set up the surrounding, you can actually, uh, so if you go to rendering, but we'll talk more once you finish texturing the bridge, but I'll show you just the basic of rendering now. Uh, just a second. So we, you can choose where is this uh, positioned. You can oh yeah. So it will place exactly on the globe. And you can also change the time and date when you are actually visualizing. We can activate or deactivate the background uh, to have uh, this for uh, virtual background just to simulate the 
to see the shadows or not but uh, I'll go back to something in this area position of sun fill in light latitude background instead of colors we can change the color of the background so if you'd like it to be on white you can just select any color you like okay doesn't matter uh, or you can choose this physical sky and it will simulate the sky according to the hour you're doing the rendering as if it's morning or noon or dusk or whatever and uh, in the end if you like the rendering you just right click and say here render it's that easy and you choose here there are some settings for rendering we won't choose well, maybe you have a good computer let's try high but not a big picture now rendering there are some settings here as well okay we'll let them by default and just hit render and it will activate the cinema 4 render from maxon for this uh, window we are using so it will first do on the radiance cache and then it will actually do the rendering so it's just right click render on the animation window basically and you'll see it adds shadows it adds the third years edition materials have bump as well they're more advanced uh, materials so this is basically how you do renderings of your element if you'd like to preview your rendering you can instead of animation you can always select real-time render and this will let you do preview so now it's rendering continuously you see and you can change the way you look so if you decide to change the angle a bit or anything you like it will start rendering it renders so it will get more precise it will stop sometime but uh, it helps you understand how it will, it would look in the final rendering without rendering and not being pleased by the result and do it again okay but this is really so it's now not okay to work with real-time render just when you want rendering otherwise it consumes your processor yes after you finish you just play with it and uh, let it do the final render of course you can also yes yes and there's also this sketch mode as if you are sketching the as if you drew it on paper okay Rida. So try to texture everything you like. I'll show you also an example for the street, but there will be some challenges to do the street. So if we were just to... Yes, we might need the, the red line again and create just a rectangle that works exactly on top of the bridge. So we have an object we can texture because otherwise uh, we would do like this, but it's not your case. So that's why it will be more challenging. So if this were the road, but it's not your case, we just go to Google or And Google in Google Images. So searching Google Images. For instance, this one. Or you can find whatever you need. So you just say road texture and you will have a big database. Uh,
first of all, we'll search for We'll try to find one that is in plane, so it's not isometric or 3D. Okay, well, no, I can do like this, for instance. Let's take this picture, or maybe, okay, well, just for example, we can use this. But it's too low quality. copy and you said you had more than this number of lanes that's no problem oh not fresh pay uh, can you close this yes I don't know how to close Okay. Uh, no, just paint, simple paint. I can paste that image and then copy it here. Transparent selection, control C, control V, and add some extra lanes here. That this in case you don't find the, the one with the number of lanes you need. This can be an alternative. So I can select this and just for surface in the properties window, the surface, and I can browse for that picture. And now I selected that picture, but now it's a very important the ratio of mapping. And this is how it can be scaled on one cube. Uh, 
here I actually have to mention the distance I think 10 meters let's try like this I don't know where is this I don't know why they complicated things. In the older version it was so easy. <coughs> Change texture. Okay, the project, road surface. Okay, okay. So I go here to project where I save the road. I don't know why I say this in the project, I don't know where it has gone. It should have been here. Yes, it's strange. Uh, no, I'm getting annoyed. You found it? Yeah. Yeah, but road, perfect. Okay, I've seen it and hit enter. Uh, and we need to rotate it or scale it. So if it's not, it has so. We will need to calibrate. So you know the length of it. So you have like how many lanes? You see, you have here two dimensions. You happen to know how many lanes you have? 29 so change the dimensions now we'll change we'll change accordingly but we'll need to know so you have 29 meters right 23.82 okay so, for this distance, it shows this many lanes, and now, if we need less lanes than this, we'll just need to edit the texture, so, we go here. We can edit here, and change the scaling, so if we need less, we'll change here this ratio, instead of, let's say, 10. Okay, and hit enter again, and now it changed the number. It does a multiplication, so we'll need to establish the width and then how many lanes we need, and then we'll calibrate to find a ratio. The only problem will be how to map it on your exact bridge. So I only showed some example here, maybe you'll find a better texture. But mainly this is how we'll do. 
so we might need to do another part only with the 3D surface that covers your bridge, just to have this area. Okay, do you have any questions? No? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Yes, maybe we'll be able to meet if you can. Okay. Okay, Reda. Thank you.